Hello and welcome to La Rosa Reads. I'm Denise La Rosa and today I am super duper excited to do this celebratory video where I share with all of my book loving friends my favorite reads of 2022. Let's talk books. What a year it has been, my friends. It has been a year full of joy and getting lost into so many different worlds within the books that I have read. And I cannot wait to share with all of you my favorite reads of the year. And I'm also curious about what your favorite reads of the year have been as well. So without any further ado, let's talk about my favorite reads of 2022. Two. All right, in true Denise LaRosa fashion, I have an agenda. I want to share with everyone the game plan for this video. So, none of my nonfiction reads appear in my favorite reads of the year, my top five or four. So, I wanted to give a special shout out to the memoirs, my favorite memoirs that I've read. And so, I will share those with you. I will also share my favorite nonfiction reads that are non memoirs. Next, I will share my favorite read of the fourth quarter of the year and then will come the time where I will show you all of my favorite reads of each month of the year narrowing it down to the most exquisite amazing incredible book that I read in the year of 2022 so let's hop to it I read some amazing memoirs this year some of which I knew I expected them to be phenomenal and others that were quite a surprise for me so let me give a disclaimer I need to make it clear to everyone that these are my favorite reads of the year that doesn't mean that they were published in the year of 2022 all right so coming in at number five for my favorite memoir list is a princess Found by Sarah Culberson. Number four, The Sporty One by Melanie C. I love me some Spice Girls. Number three, Unprotected by the one, the only Billy Porter. At number two is Beautiful Country by Kian Julie Wang. And my number one favorite memoir that I read this year is Let Love Rule by Lenny Kravitz. What made this memoir amazing is that Lenny Kravitz is a quiet, he seems to be a quiet, low-key, mellow kind of guy and very mysterious. We learned so many wonderful things about his upbringing, which was very unconventional. Growing up with a Jewish father, a black mother who was in the entertainment industry, having a godmother by the name of Cicely Tyson, there were so many fun facts, so many uh, moments of introspection that not only helped me to better understand Lenny Kravitz, the artist and the human being, but actually had me give myself pause and find the wondrous things about my life. Those simple things that are actually truly gifts. So shout out to Lenny Kravitz. I'm looking forward to part two of this memoir. And then there were the nonfiction reads, the non-memoir nonfiction reads. And so at number five of that list is The Right to Sex. Number four, A Little Devil in America. Number three, Muppets in Moscow. Number two, How the Word is Passed. And my number one favorite nonfiction read of this year is But A Backstory. Oh my lordy, this book was such a surprise. So it's kind of tongue in cheek, pun intended, you know, the title and the subtitle. And I never thought that this book was not a serious one, nonetheless. It turned out to be a book that was so informative while being engaging, entertaining, and really like a feminist movement. I, I don't know, it was really amazing how this author, who I'm gonna be honest with you, I kind of questioned, I'm like, mm, you know, because a lot of the information is dealing with black women and black culture and this author does not identify as black. So I thought this would be an interesting journey. And so she was able to touch on the universal challenges of body image when it comes to women and particularly their backsides. And I cannot recommend this book enough. I listened to the audiobook, which I highly recommend, but a backstory was a winner. Keeping up with my tradition of sharing with you my favorite books of each quarter of the year, I'm going to share with you my top five favorite books of the fourth quarter of this year. 
Coming in at number five is a book that I read in October, and it is Witchful Thinking by a new author, Celestine Martin. I love this book. It gave everything that I expected it to. It is a light, fun, fantastical <laughs> romance that just was so fun and lighthearted. It was exactly what I needed in October. It had a little bit of witchery involved, so it gave me those spooky October vibes. I wouldn't necessarily say spooky, but definitely some October vibes. We have a merman and a witch who are long friends, longtime friends, and they never quite were able to fulfill their desire of being a couple when they were young. And ended up realizing that dream as adults. So very good reading there with number five. My number four favorite read of the fourth quarter of the year is By Her Own Design, which is written by Piper Hoogley. This author has some Pittsburgh roots, which I love being a fellow Pittsburgher myself. And this is a novel of Anne Lowe, fashion designer to the social register. This novel, this um, historical fiction piece did an excellent job of staying true to Anne Lowe's life while also adding some elements that made this story so entertaining and um, such a fast, engaging read. And you really ended up appreciating Anne Lowe, really appreciating generational joys and challenges and having that dream of living out your ancestor's dream. Great read with By Her Own Design. Number three was the book that I was really trying to read earlier in the year and finally got to it in October. And it did not disappoint. Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby was impeccable. The writing, the suspense, the twists, the turns. Would I say this was a thriller? No, it was more of a mystery. Um, but it was amazing. We have a gay couple, uh, an interracial gay couple, who unfortunately were gruesomely murdered and their fathers were not approving of their lifestyle, but yet found that through their son's untimely and gruesome deaths, that they needed to kind of reclaim fatherhood and make right, do right by their sons by finding out who committed this awful crime. And these fathers have very rough past. <laughs> they both were um, convicted felons and ended up forming this unlikely friendship. This book was amazing. I will definitely be reading more of S.A. Cosby's books. <sighs> and book number two is a book that gave me all the feels, The Traveling Cat Chronicles. I have read quite a few Japanese books this year, and I have to say, I think I have found so much joy in reading books from this culture. And this book, dealing with cats, so character-driven, relationships, tragedy, love. It had all of the things that just had me all up in my feelings. This book is incredible. If you're into character-driven melancholy reads, this book is for you. And my number one favorite read of the fourth quarter of this year, known to us as 2022, is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book, you guys, I've seen it all around and it kind of piqued my interest. I heard some of my students talking about it and I'm like, hmm, maybe someday. But when I tell you guys that my wonderful students in the upper school where I work, because the school is like for three divisions, lower school, middle school, and upper school, and I work with all of the students, pre-K through grade 12, there is an upper school book club that they said was inspired by me, which warms my heart. It's called Books and Baked Goods. And the students asked me to be a part of this club. And hello, of course I'm going to be. They selected the Song of Achilles as our winter read. And I have to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to my students. Thank you, thank you, thank you for putting this book on my radar. This book is so wonderful. This is not the last you're going to see of it in this video. So 
I will tell you more about it in a moment. All right, friends, let me share with all of you my favorite books of each month of this year. As you see on this graphic, I have kept track of my favorite reads of each month. I love this template because it's broken up by quarters. You can break each row up into the quarters of the year. And therefore, I took this graphic and highlighted, circled my favorite books of each quarter. As you can see, my favorite book from the first quarter is The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. My favorite book of the second quarter was Half Blown Rose. My favorite book of the third quarter was Miss Benson's Beetle. And you just discovered that my favorite book of the fourth quarter of this year is The Song of Achilles. So the time has come to share with all of you my favorite book of this year. Drum roll, please. My favorite book of 2022 is The Song of Achilles. I don't know why I sing the title. Yay! Oh my goodness, you guys. If you haven't read this book, shame on you. You need to pick it up, get the audiobook, which I hear is also equally fantastic. The Song of Achilles gives and gives and gives. It gives romance. We have Greek mythology. We have thriller vibes. We have just so much bundled up into this book. But most importantly, y'all, the writing is some of the most beautiful writing I have ever read in my 41 years of living on this planet. Madeline Miller is just an exquisite writer. Everything is so intentional, so descriptive, and it makes you feel like you are right there in that moment, feeling those feelings, feeling those emotions that the characters express. The Song of Achilles is not told from the POV of Achilles. It is told from the POV of his best friend and lover, Patroclus. I think that was a brilliant move on her part. And Patroclus is this lesser known character from Greek mythology. And so we're really able to see the Trojan War from his perspective, which is so different and so refreshing. The way the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles is laid out is just absolutely beautiful. Love is love. You see how this friendship evolved into, I don't even want to say a romantic relationship because that's just too trivial. It's like a deep love and fondness and care for each other that really carried on for their whole entire 18 years of knowing each other and determined a lot of the decisions that both Patroclus and Achilles made throughout that time. Oh, I could go on and on, but I promised my husband that I would make this video short. You guys, read The Song of Achilles. And if you have read it, please hop over to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. And again, I cannot thank my students enough it is so mind blowing to think that this book that ended up being my favorite book of the year was a book that wasn't even on my TBR. I am truly grateful for my students for exposing me to such an incredible read. What was your favorite book of the year? I'd love to know. So let me know. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.